<laughs> Welcome to Hardcore Garage. Today, we're tearing into this lime juice and getting them springs on there. But <laughs> I don't know what I've got myself into on this. Always remember, two steps forward, one step back. I'm Johnny Garage Johnson, and this is Hardcore Garage. Got her jacked up, got the batteries on the charger. <laughs> I want you guys to see this. Whoever put these things on here, look at the freaking gouges in these things and how bent those ears are. And now these are super thin, so they're definitely not dating adapters. You can just tell by the weight of it and the look. I think I'm gonna do away with the sway bar. I'll just keep it around for parts, cause you don't really need it. This has two separate lines running to the front. It's not teed out and it'll get a little, lot more movement if I remove that sway bar. This one here almost killed me. Look how far I had to bend that bad boy over. Just wailing on it with my hammer. <laughs> These are nice and it's that removable chrome. You throw this in the freezer and then stick it back on there. Now this side for some reason is rusty as ever. Well, all we're gonna do is get rid of that sway bar, probably pop the bottom ball joint and have access to those springs and then figure out what we need to do. I don't know if I can get this one off of here like I did the other side or not. Can't see nothing. Nothing from nothing equals nothing. Are you kidding me? Jeez. Gotta freaking lay on the ground. Might as well do some sit ups while I'm down here. Got all this amazing parts here. Slowly come down while you're doing that. Pour all the way out and it'll just all fall out. <laughs> and we just made this truck a lot lighter. Okay, so those are not 15 mil. What you need to do is this one here and there's one on the back side over here too. Can you see it right there? And those guys are 10 millimeter, which is kind of odd, to be honest. The ratchet wouldn't get it, so I had to break out. Well, actually, I, I meant the impact wouldn't get it. So I had to break out the ratchet buster. We'll see if this guy's big enough to do it. Enough for the impact to get it. Looks like it is. Dropped it. I dropped it like it's hot. See if 
if we can break the other side loose. Sway now. The plan is loosen that up a little bit, whack it with a hammer a couple of times. Hopefully, the bottom ball joint will pop. Slide my jack under that control arm and let it down. The only thing we had to remove was the sway bar. That's the plan. Do things always go as planned? No. Uh, matter of fact, they rarely go as planned. So, I yanked the cotter pin out with some dikes. And usually these aren't very tight. Uh, by that I mean they're not torqued or anything. This one here, look, it's gonna come right off. Probably uh, need to get my jack over here. And I may not even be able to swing a hammer from this weird angle. I might have to get out the pickle fork. Or, or should I call it a ball joint, <laughs> ball joint boot destroyer. <laughs> Now there's hardly any pressure on the spring. You can see what's it got. Maybe th three full coils. <laughs> and uh, I think there, it, it's already popped. We're good. Get rid of that bolt and we'll let this side down. This is probably really metric size, but I don't have any gigantic metric wrenches, if you want to call this gigantic, I guess. I was totally expecting the ball joint to spin in there too. Here's the dilemma. Okay, here is my factory. I'm guessing they use factory coils that are cut down. We've got one, two, three and a half, basically. So, if I cut this one here, I would have three and a half and three and a half. Most people are telling me I need to start with four, four and a half. Well, there's no way it's gonna go lower with this thick ass coil than it did with these. But my issue is if once I cut this in half, then then pretty much I'm screwed because I can't weld it back together. I could easily cut four on this one and four on the other one and be safe. But then I feel like, I don't know, time to, time to think. All right, I'm like trying to kill myself doing this instead of just waiting one more day till there's a parts store that's open. Started with the Sawzall blade, really, really sucked. Uh, I got about an eighth of an inch with three bland, bland new blades, three brand new blades. Finally, I took it up to Josh's when he got home from his family thing, and we were able to get a four and a half, four and a quarter, whatever it is, the big, after looking through his big ass garage for a while, uh, cutoff wheel. So I was able to get most of the way through, I would say more than halfway through these springs with that. We tried another Sawzall blade and then he's like, oh man, I've got these new blades. Let's try them. And I'm like, dude, it's not going to work with a Sawzall blade. I'm telling you. He broke them out. They were Linux blades also, but it was a medium metal blade. And that thing chewed right through the rest of this coil. So here's what we got. 
two, three and a half ton. I'm looking over at the other side again. I'm not supposed to be looking over here. Two, three and a half ton coils. <laughs> and I'm going to put the camera down here so you can see they are pretty much exactly the same size as the coils that I took out, which were a quarter ton at best. <laughs> here we are. And you can tell how fat <laughs> the blue ones are compared to the stock ones. I'm sure those are stock spring just cut. Um, but this thing should bounce. And I'm thinking it's... it's see, I, after I thought about it, I'm like, if I don't have the springs at least exactly the same height, it's going to raise it. Because this spring compresses when you put it in there. This one is not going to. So it's still going to be higher, I think, even with this. But we will see. No. So here's the dilemma I'm left with. It is about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock Christmas day, p.m., Christmas night. Do I work on it this evening or do I work on it early in the morning? And I don't think either way am I really going to be able to test it until daylight and people wake up. <laughs> and it's only going to take a couple of minutes, I think, because all I have to do is put the bottom ball joint back in. I'm not putting the sway bar back on. So, I'm super excited, man. I, and this is going to be better than Christmas watching this thing bounce off the ground. Just you wait and see. <laughs> Shake all the gravel while there. Now it's probably not going to be aligned. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do this all by myself one handed. Got to shove this bad boy way down. Get that up in there. Up on there on that. I gotta try to raise this cylinder. Use my steel toe. Ah. There we go. There we go. There we go. I think it's in the pocket, isn't it? Yeah, it's right there. Let me get to Jack. That was super easy. There she be. Let me check my hole here for my. Go to the crossways. All right. Castle nut back on. And hard to believe that's all that there is. So, really, if y'all are interested in lowering a vehicle the easy way, and I think that we've discussed it before, there may have been a reason. On the other one, I couldn't do it. Now you got your sway bar in the way. Usually. I'm breathing hard. I really like hydraulics. Always have. I like the noise they make. I like the speed. The power. All of them are pretty on the back. No, they're not. I don't even think there's any weights on these things. They're not even balanced. <laughs> nice. One thing you want to do is make sure you get your Dayton's on straight or locked in because uh, <laughs> they will fall off. It's just Teflon spray. What I got handy. This is the left side, right? <laughs> Those other knockoffs are trash. So we'll see if these ones will go on here. Try to get me some decent ones. Let's beat those on there with the freaking steel mallet. How about that?
Yeah. Check your knockoffs every thousand miles. I honestly think it came out perfect. <laughs> We're about to see though, ain't we? Here goes nothing. gonna have to block the back wheel I think so I blocked the back wheels um, I may have to adjust the dump valves also with the different spring rate it may not drop as easy as it was before so let's play and the battery ain't all the way charged just yet just experimentation dropping the same not sure what the deal is I like the way it feels but it's wanting to drop kind of crooked one side down more than quicker than the other I don't know if the front cylinders binding up maybe in there for some reason so oh well <laughs> two steps forward one step back well I'm just not gonna get the results I want uh, it keeps locking up kept locking up Pulled it back apart. The cups were loose. I rotated the springs around, unclocking them. You know, there's a little dimple in your lower A arms where the end of the spring goes. Well, I turned it so the end of the spring was all the way to the front. That kind of tilts the springs back or in towards the motor, so to speak. And I'm hoping that would, would do what I need it to do. And it did help, but it's still not getting any more lift. And, and, and the real truth is... I just don't like to listen, guys. I mean, honestly, <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> uh, it's, it's my biggest downfall, probably. I, that's why I've been self-employed most of my life. I just don't like to... It ain't so much that I don't like to listen. I don't like to be told what to do. Um, even to my detriment, I just... I, I don't know what it is. It's, it's just it's not in my DNA to... I, <laughs> I can't even explain it. But I should have listened. Um, everyone said... Even, you know, and I didn't ask for the advice is what I think caused my issues. I already knew what I was going to do. And people kept saying, you need to, you know, leave four coils, four and a half. I already had it in my head what I was going to do. And I think the issue is when it's all the way down, we're already squashing the snubbers. So it needed to be raised at least a little bit to get that extra bit of bounce when you release the pressure off those front cylinders. It's, um, you know, when you just barely hit the switch, your cylinders are still extended and, and the coils are still kind of compressed, kind of not, you know, if that makes any kind of sense. You would get the most bounce with no pressure on the cylinders, if that makes sense. And as much spring compression as you could before you would hit that the switch again. I know there's a lot to do with, with switch timing and your dump timing and all that, and I'm going to work on that. Um, you know, again, it's been 25 years since I played with any hydraulics and I'm, I'm having to relearn all this stuff and, and 
you know, I'm, I'm stupid. I'm hydraulic stupid. <laughs> Just like I'm four wheel drive stupid and engine stupid. <laughs> then it's okay though. I'm learning. And, and by the time slime time is here, which supposed to be like a couple more days and not, I just don't see that happening but whatever I don't care uh, it'll be here eventually <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna still figure out something about that I don't know what to do now I've got some full-size coils over there you know s10 four three coils I doubt I can go buy just one more red spring they probably sell them in the pair uh, maybe somewhere along the line I'll find someone that cut one in half and I could buy the other one maybe if you have one, hit me up. <laughs> if not, I'll live to see another day and figure it out some other time because I'm just not worried about it right now. I got it back together driving and it's it's functioning as it should again. And no, it didn't hop any higher than what it was the first time. I'm not even sure it's hopping as good as it did. So maybe those other coils will just go back in there. Oh, well, it is what it is, guys. Just another day in the life of... Just another day in garage life. How about that? <laughs> Y'all take it easy. Hit that subscribe button down there. Notification bell over here. Or it's probably over there. Who knows? Like, subscribe. Share. Hope y'all have a great new year. Take it easy. Keep on trucking.